Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Nationals podcast. Today it is March 25th, 2022. On today's show, we'll be discussing a couple things. We'll kind of tie in two pitching notes. Matt Weirich had a nice tweet the other day about, hey, Patrick Corbin, he's on track to be the opening day starter. I hadn't really thought about it until now. Also, an article from ESPN.com discussing uh, how the Nationals plan on taking Steven Strasburg's return very slowly, which they should be doing. And then also Jessica Camarado over at uh, MLB.com had an article predicting the Nationals opening day roster, which I think that'd be a fun exercise for us to go through her piece. Always great stuff from her. So we'll go through that. It's pretty fresh, too. It was written yesterday. So we'll discuss that and more coming up on a fun Friday edition of Locked On Nationals. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here, host of the Locked On Nationals podcast. Before we get into the show today, make sure you guys find us on Twitter at LO underscore Nationals. You guys can follow us uh, and follow me personally, excuse me, at Josh Neighbors underscore. You guys can find us wherever you all get your podcasts. And also, you guys can find us now on YouTube. Make sure you guys subscribe, tell your friends. Trying to get to, let's get over 100 subscribers before the season starts. And I appreciate you all for supporting this, getting more popular as we approach the season. And I'll tell you what, there was so much negativity during the lockout. And I feel like we're at a place now where there's just, uh, there's a lot of positive momentum for baseball. And I feel like maybe it's just the springtime, the weather's getting better, college, you know, March Madness is on, which everybody loves, which means it's baseball season. So I feel like the lockout and the issues presented by the lockout are a thing of the past in terms of the minds of the fans, right? New signings, deals, guys moving around. It caused a lot of excitement, even for teams like the Nationals, where, look, we're not sure how good the Nationals are going to be this year, but we do know at least they're going to be entertaining, right? If you're going to be bad, be entertaining. And this Nationals team, I don't think they're going to be entertaining in a bad way. They're going to be entertaining in a fun way, like they might score a lot of runs and might give up a lot of runs type of fun. That's always possible when you have one set of, but guys, just, just think about this, all right? March 25th today, we are less than two weeks away. We are, we are 13 days away. Opening day was two weeks, is two weeks from yesterday. Uh, April 7th, 4.05, Nats Park, a four-game set with the uh, New York Mets, will begin for the Nationals. And so that is exciting. And to transition to what we're talking about today, who will be taking the ball on that opening day for the Nationals? Well, uh, we think it's going to be Patrick Corbin. And so the reason uh, for that is, number one, Steven Strasburg is on his way back. And number two, uh, Corbin's the elder statesman now uh, of the staff in terms of kind of longevity and being with D.C. And so uh, there's an article from the Associated Press, Steven Strasburg, Washington Nationals, not pushing for a fast return. This is from West Palm Beach, Florida. doesn't say he wrote this, but the Washington Nationals are willing to wait for whatever Steven Strasburg can deliver this season. That's the approach Dave Martinez is taking with the former World Series MVP who's recovering from thoracic outlet syndrome surgery and has pitched a total of 26 and two-thirds innings in his last uh, two seasons. Uh, Dave Martinez says, quote, we're not going to get 175 innings, end quote. Quote, whatever we get out of him is going to be good. That's the way I'm looking at it. So if it's 100 innings, hopefully we'll get the best 100 innings we could possibly get from him, end quote. So, um, you know, this just kind of goes on to say, uh, you know, it kills him to not be out there. And obviously we know what kind of competitor he is. On March 15th, Strasburg threw a 25-pitch live bullpen session. Afterwards, he said he wouldn't uh, let the MLB schedule dictate his buildup for the season. He intended to progress at his own deliberate pace during a spring training compressed by the lockout. And that's really important. Um, now, now, uh, Strasburg, let's see, Martinez uh, hopes that the 12-year veteran could have appear in a great fruit league game for the Nationals depart for April 7th. Um, and he says, I have not ruled him out. So obviously they're not going to start him um, in a setting, you know, they're not going to start him on opening day, right? He's not going to be there pitching on opening day uh, because you know that, that when you throw a guy out there opening day, right, you're going to say, hey, we're expecting you to be a starting pitcher unless you're doing the whole bullpen thing, but they're not. 
So uh, a grapefruit game, you only get to throw them, you know, inning or two, right? Probably just an inning, I think, you know, live action, inning, inning, two innings maybe, just to see what he looks like. But this year for the Nationals, we consider it to be somewhat of a rebuild, right? So there is no rush to get him back. And I think what's frustrated Nationals fans, and we know it's frustrating Dave Martinez, and we really know it's frustrating Steven Strasburg is his inability uh, to be out there because it's a competitive guy. You know he wants to be out there with his teammates making an impact and, and and making sure that he earns his money on that contract. Nobody wants to go down as a guy who you know was a big bust and it was a bad contract because they couldn't be out in the field, uh, especially a guy who we know has championship pedigree and can be you know a World Series MVP type player. You know it it must be so difficult for him to sit there and, and uh, you know come back and then, and then miss it and, and then and not look good and then you know deal with these injuries. So I think it's really important that when he comes back, he better be Steven, Steven Strasburg and they better be careful with it because they've got so much invested in him, so much tied up in him, and there's no use this season uh, to, you know, to, to, to overwork him or try to hurry something up. We'll see where they are in the Nationals as, as time goes along. But I, I think this year when you're trying to think about building a competitive team moving forward – Look at where your money is allocated. Well, a lot of their money is tied up in Steven Strasburg. So if you want to make the pitch to Juan Soto about having a competitive team, having a near tip-top shape or best you can provide Steven Strasburg is a huge key in saying, hey, we have this piece on the pitching side that we can rely on uh, every five days You know, is another reason that you should stay here, right? In addition to obviously other things like lineup support and uh, you know, offensively and building a bullpen and stuff like that. But having the Steven Strasburg element is very important, in my opinion, in that pitch to one soda. It might not seem like it, but if you're talking about, hey, this guy's got a big chunk of cash, we're trying to build a winning team. We need that chunk of cash to provide for us on the field. And right now it's not, but, you know, it's out of his control. It's not like he, you know, doesn't, you know, it's not like he sucks and he's, and he's slacking off and he's made his money and he's fine or whatever. It's because of injuries. Nobody, you know, he's, he's, um, he's not the demonstrative competitor that, uh, that, you know, Max Scherzer was, he's the quiet competitor. Right. And, and that's fine. You know, there's different strokes for different folks, but uh, obviously I think we all know he wants to be out there. So uh, as I take a sip of water here, this leads us to the next part of the conversation. Who is going to be the opening day starter for the Nationals? And, uh, you know, after Max Scherzer leave, I mean, we've seen so many years of it being Scherzer. It's so weird to see that. But Patrick Corbin is going to be the opening day starter. At least he's on track for it. Now, the signs in spring have been um, positive so far, right? I, I think that's what a lot of people feel like. He, he looks like he's doing better. Um, and, you know, it has to be, right? This is a guy that just had such an abysmal 2020. And uh, this, so far, four innings work for him. He has surrendered no runs, three hits, four Ks. So slowly working back. And it was just, I think he's only made uh, one one start. But it was a, it was a uh, you know, a start where people said, okay, all right, it's, you know, it, tempered optimism once again. But this is a guy that his numbers say he's a different dude, right? His numbers say that he is a better pitcher than what he showed last season. I mean, a 5.82 ERA in, you know, uh, I mean, this guy was worked 171 innings, right? And that followed up a 4.66. So it's been a steady decline. You know, the 18 season um, with, with Arizona was really strong, 3.15 ERA and, and 200 innings pitched. Then 3.25 back in 2019, the championship winning season. 4.66 and back in 2020 then 2021 it was a uh, it was a 5.82 and you know the, we know the rest of the numbers too they just it was not good across the board so you know it, it kind of falls towards him now um and did he make the changes did he do the requisite things he needed to in the off season to to get himself ready to go another guy who's competitive we know that he wants to you know provide you know provide a a uh, good spark uh you know the first guy in the rotation now for this team and and be that strong number 2 guy um, but just watching him go through it last year was was really challenging because, you know, whenever he pitched, it would ask a lot of the Nationals offense. The Nationals offense would have to provide so much because of his inag- inadequacies um, last season. He's making far too much money to perform like that, and he's got to step it up. Um, the Nationals need, you know, need to, as I mentioned before, get a lot out of these two big contracts they have if they want to uh, ensure that, you know, they're building a winning team and trying to re-sign a guy like a Juan Soto. So that's where we are, Patrick Corbin. But it, but it feels like he is on track right now, you know, barring injury or whatever, 
to be the opening day starter. You just look across the rest of the rotation guys that are around available. You know, not everybody's fighting. Um, uh, not everybody's fighting for spots at this point in time, but uh, he is in a he's in a position right now where he's clearly that guy out of the guys that they have. All right, quick word from our sponsors, and then we'll talk about the roster prediction, opening day roster predictions that Jessica Camarado did uh, on MLB.com. But first, once again, quick word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to Built.com today. That's Built.com to check out the extensive line of Built Bars they've got right now. So many different flavors to choose from. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, cookies and cream. Most Built Bars have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that with a candy bar. It's usually got 240 calories, 30 grams of protein, and dozens of, uh, or uh, 30 grams of sugar, excuse me, and dozens of net carbs. Go to built.com today. It's built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15. You'll get 15% off at built.com today. All right, so Jessica Camarado from, uh, from MLB.com has a prediction for the Nationals opening day roster. This is the stuff where we, uh, you know, us podcasters and pundits uh, really, you know, we, we, we get excited for these kinds of things. So uh, she mentions that the Nationals opening day game is April 7th, 4.05 p.m. Eastern time at Nationals Park. Catch that on Masson. Hell yeah. Um, and here's a prediction. Let's go position by position. Catchers, K. Bear Ruiz and Riley Adams. This one to me is is pretty cut and dry. I think after the perform, you know, there's there's some conversation around Trace Barrera or whatever, but I, and uh, you know the other kid had gotten the uh, the the A's trade. Um, this this is the catching tandem that we're gonna have, especially now at you know that, that kind of things are um, things are kind of solved at DH, right? Like I think Riley Adams' best chance to get reps is first base sometimes and also as the backup catcher. And I think he'll be pinch hitting a good amount this season too, which we'll see how he deals with as a young player can be difficult. Um, But Ruiz is 23. Adams is 25. And, uh, you know, Ruiz now it's time for him to, you know, to begin to improve and he's just 23 years old, but he'll take charge of the staff. And these two young guys are going to get to learn to take charge of a staff together. I think it's exciting. I think that's one of the things that, you know, in, in baseball, I mean, uh, this is why we're seeing such a premium being placed on catchers right now. Forget who Lindsey Crosby from Locked On the MLB Prospects had the other day, but there's another catcher. I forget which team is soaring at the boards. You know, Henry Davis goes, Adley Rushman goes. These teams want guys who can run a staff, who can, you know, play that position, who can hit. Um, and uh, it's why these guys are so valuable. And he, he appears to be – you know, a guy that uh, we think has that ability. So he is going to get the, the charge from day one. Um, you know, once again, just 23 years old, going to turn 24 during the season. So we'll see where his development takes him. But didn't really play a whole lot back in 2022, um, excuse me, in 2021, right? We saw pretty limited action for him. Uh, in total, he ended up playing 29 games, 23 for the Nats. He hit 284, the 348 on base. You know, hit two home runs, drove in 14 runs, and a um, you know, in 89 plate appearances. Which, once again, decent number, but not a ton, right? Not, not a ton of uh, you know, uh, right there. His projections, for what it's worth, from Baseball Reference for 2022 are 258, 328, 431, 90, uh, 759 OPS, uh, nine home runs, 32 runs driven in. And, uh, they, you know, this is for 250 plate appearances. So that's a catch situation. Obviously, Riley Adams is there as well. Infielders. Infielders. All right. Josh Bell, Cesar Hernandez, Alcides Escobar, Michael Franco, and Hire Adrianza. All right. This is where, uh, you know, where we're looking right now for, you know, um, you know which guys are going to come through, right? And I think the interesting part of this is that there is no Luis Garcia in this list. And I, I think there's a good possibility that he plays in triple a. I think it's important that if they, you know, I'm fine with that route as like, I'm, I'd rather see Luis Garcia. Um, he has so much going on right now. I got a truck back on the other side, dog is barking, but Luis Garcia, the, the thing for him at his age is to play every day. Um, and if you're going to be splitting time with the nationals, you know, with, with guys like Cesar Hernandez, uh, I don't want to see that, right? I want to see 
hundred percent him get reps, wherever that is, because we know that the, uh, the fielding part of it is what needs work. Uh, Matt Weirich and I talked about it the other day, just the ups and downs for him. Great play one time, you know, boneheaded play the next. And just, it's, it's all about Joe and reps. So, you know, it's 10,000 hours, Malcolm Gladwell, all that kind of stuff, right? It's just, you got to master the positions. And um, there's some conversation about him playing shortstop potentially, right? Uh, you know, just kind of getting used to that. But I think if you're going to do that, running that in AAA is the right way to go. So I would say your locks obviously are Josh Bell, Cesar Hernandez, and Alcides Escobar. Those three guys are going to be there. They brought in the uh, Ahiri Adrianza. I think it's pretty pretty safe to say he's the next guy. So the next question becomes, all right, who is the fifth guy they bring in? And I think Mike Alfranco has to be that third base guy because at this point in time, uh, you know, Carter Keboom is on that 60-day IL, right? So fresh opportunity for him. We'll see what he does. But the other possibilities you list are Lucius Fox and Richard Urena. Um, I, I think this, this one's pretty cut and dry due to number one injuries, number two, well, you know, Luis Garcia factors in, but I, I think to me, it makes sense that you get him as many reps as possible, especially if he is going to be playing shortstop, that is important that you get him all the reps possible at shortstop or reps, even at second base too. It just, he needs to be out there playing the position. That's the important thing. And if that's triple a, that is a hundred percent fine with me. I don't think we should complain too much. I think 2020 was kind of a weird um, adjuster to our expectations on that. Outfield, all right? Outfield. Shockingly, Juan Soto. Uh, Victor Robles, Lane Thomas, Yadiel Hernandez, Andrew Stevenson, other candidates. She has D. Strange Gordon. Uh, he's had a really nice uh, start to spring training so far. Soto obviously is going to be there. Um, Lane Thomas will keep getting that chance. Yadiel Hernandez, because the good offensive he had last year, will be there. Victor Robles, think you got to keep him because it's time to put up or shut up, right? And then Andrew Stevenson, who's, who's done enough, I think, to earn it. But your, your question is, if you go D-Strange Gordon, who are you going to leave out? Who are you going to, to keep? Because I think the Nationals, you know, they once again have to see what they have in Victor Robles, so he's going to be there. Lane Thomas was so good last year, I think, once again, he needs more opportunity. Yadiel Hernandez, I think, because once again, a good offensive season, and I still think Andrew Stevenson, they have some faith in, so and, and like him as, as kind of versatility. Um, so I think that's that's where they're going to go in that direction. Uh, I know D. Strange Gordon is playing well, but I'd like to know, you know, which, which of those guys is he going to replace? Excuse me. Uh, which of those guys is he going to replace, um, you know, in that list? All right. We'll get to pitchers, but first, one more word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online and BetOnline.net. If you guys want to get in on some MLB futures, some MLB odds, you guys can get on spring training, uh, college basketball. Obviously, it is in full swing right now with the NCAA tournament happening. So, so much to get uh, in on right now at BetOnline and BetOnline.net. They've got NASCAR, they've got F1, they've got UFC, they've got boxing, they've got Vegas casino games. So go to BetOnline and BetOnline.net today. You'll find something um, that, you know, you'll definitely find something you want to get in on the action. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. All right. So the pitching part of this situation. Also, Nelson Cruz. uh, DH Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz. So that that one's obvious. Pitchers starting. She has Patrick Corbin, Josiah Gray, Eric Fetty, Anibal Sanchez, and Josh Rogers. Other possibilities, Cade Cavalli, Paulo Espino. Okay, so the Nationals here, Patrick Corbin's a yes, Josiah Gray's a yes. Um, Eric Fetty's yes, I think, I think of where he is in, in, in the entire thing. Josh Rogers is a yes because small sample size and he's cheap. But you could switch Espino for Rogers. I wouldn't be surprised if Spino makes a roster, but they put him in kind of the bullpen situation, right? So that, that kind of might be where you see him. Um, so I, I think he's a candidate to potentially go to the bullpen. But And then Anibal Sanchez, too. I think Espino could take his spot. So Rogers, Sanchez, and Espino, are, to me, are all fighting for one spot. Um, uh, excuse me. They're fighting for two spots. Um, the, the two guys you have to factor in, uh, when they add back are going to be number one, Steven Strasburg and then number two, uh, Joe Ross. Now look, one of the other guys might get hurt. So this might be a, you know, a, a 
worthless conversation to have. But right now, at the start of the season, Corbin, Strasburg, Gray, Fetty, Sanchez, Rogers, Espino, Ross. Eight guys, there are five spots. Now, two are hurt. I just gave a middle finger by accident. Two of the guys are hurt. So, you know, once again, now it's six guys, and three of them are set. Corbin, Gray, and Fetty. Um, so three, three of those. So that, that leaves the other three guys I mentioned uh, fighting for those spots. So Sanchez, Rogers, and Espino. Espino has a little bit of experience, but it was kind of a stopgap setting. I think they want to give Anibal Sanchez the chance just because of his connection to the organization and, uh, you know, kind of the velocity returning and things, things of that nature. So they want to see what they've got there. Once again, another cheap option. Pa, uh, Josh Rogers, I would just, I would kick the tires on that too. I would pick him over Espino because he's younger. I think that's what makes sense, right? Going with the guy who is younger, um, you know, and it's got a lot of team control left. Let me go check the uh, uh, spot track is also the great, the greatest tool um, on planet earth. I love spot track so much. Let's see. Uh, I mean, a lot of these guys have team control left, but when you talk about, you know, a guy like Josh Rogers, they just got last season. Like this is somebody that if he can be effective. Uh, you know, he's a younger guy. So uh, you're, you're looking at somebody that is, you know, um, going to fill innings for you. And, and Espino didn't always fill a ton. Like, you know, it felt like, you know, asking six out of him was a lot. Espino's got one, one more year of, of team control, uh, as does Rogers, but he's 27 years old. And so to me, that's why I would roll in that direction. Uh, and then Cade Cavalli, man, triple A, just triple A, triple A, triple A, get the reps. No need to throw him up there before he's ready. We'll see him later in the year. That's the plan. Penn, c as the, you now we got the vacuum going off in my house too. Unbelievable. c Sheck, Doolittle, Espino, Finnegan, Harris, Machado, Perez, Rainey, Mason Thompson, Austin Voth. So uh, I think you could see Paulo Espino figure in in maybe not the Austin Voth role, but maybe the Austin Voth role, or maybe the uh, Andres Machado role. But the guys that you know for sure, c Sheck signing, Doolittle signing. I think you'll see him for sure. Oh, he does have Espino in there. Um, Kyle Finnegan, definitely going to be there. Will Harris, definitely going to be there. Guys like Perez and Machado, you're not sure about. Mason Thompson is going to be there. And I feel like Voth's going to be there too. Um, So this also too is about structuring the back end. Like I, I, once again, I've said I'm somebody that believes in going with your, you know, using different guys in different spots, not having a set closer. But the Nationals were such a disaster last year, kind of with that. I, I want to know what this looks like. Are you going to slowly bring along Mason Thompson, or are you going to give him the seventh? Right, you give him the seventh inning, a certain setting. Um, you know, where does Cishek fall into this? Doolittle. Are you going to go with Harris as a potential closer and keep him the eighth inning guy? I think right now everybody is um, everybody is kind of pointing towards Tanner Rainey, and I think the change in expectation or the change in kind of positions. Hey, look, you had a rough year in 2021. But what if you give you the keys to the ninth inning, it's your inning, and we'll give it to you a fresh start here in 2022? Is, is that the right way to go? I think it is, right? What do you have to lose? It's a guy that, once again, you know, it's it's uh, he's had an interesting up and down career, still just 29 years old. He's still got him under uh, control right now, and I think there's a good, you know, good chance that he could uh, perform for you. And uh, depending on how well he performs for you, you could get a decent haul for him if you're if you're at, at the deadline and you suck, uh, or you keep him. Right? I mean, the guy's got a lot of team control yet, but he's a va- you know could be a valuable commodity at 30 years old if he ends up being the closer and does a really good job. You know, a good asset either way, whether you keep him, whether you're not. But I, I think once again for this team, it feels like everybody always on the table. Bullpen, one place where we know they have to improve this season. So. Uh, I like the mix of veterans. The mix of veterans um, right now, young guys in the pen. You know, Finnegan's still younger-ish. Uh, you know, Machado is younger-ish. Mason Thompson's younger, and so we'll see. It's, it's but th- this group should be better than last year's. They have to be better than last year. I feel like there's no way they could be worse. All right, that will do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at lo underscore nationals. You guys can follow me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Till next time, my friends. As always, stay safe and enjoy your weekend.